well being by the unbeaten this event will start in one minute who is in his second season as a sire now and did well with his first crop of two-year-olds with a 29 percent strike rate and his dam was a six furlong to eight and a half furlong all weather winner including a u.s two-year-old grade one so he could be anything still and Jos, john gosden sent the exciting looking frankly darling to newcastle on monday so He's already off to a good start here, and it's just the first week. But I, at the prices, I'm going to oppose him with Captain Magnum purely because of Archie Watson's record there yesterday. Holly Doyle's flying, and um, apparently he's a very nice horse at home, goes very well, and is very straightforward. No, I, I, he's not on the list, is he? For... No, he wasn't on the list, mm. no. He had to get it down to seven, Archie, <laughs> from his 120 million two-year-olds he has. <laughs> Poor Captain Magnum. He was eighth on the list, apparently. Seven to four for Captain Magnum. <laughs> <First reserve. laughs> um, Ross, I, I did get a word for, for Third Kingdom a bit earlier on. Obviously, that the market support is, is now reciprocating any idea of, of that. But then again, we have an Archie Watson horse to, to try and take on. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the interesting one for me, though, is Rebel at Dawn. Um, Carl Burke has a fantastic strike rate with his two-year-olds at this track, uh, nine from 48, um, with a really good um, uh, level state profit as well. Uh, again, the likes of John Gosden do, loves a, a decent horse at Newcastle, but you know, Carl Burke, Ben Curtis's mounts have been heavily back throughout the day. Um Ragtime dancer, the the dam uh, of the uh, the Carl Burke horse uh, was a a two year old winner on the poly track over at Lingfield, um, drawn in ten, which often is uh, a good place to be at Newcastle. Again, we don't want to get too wrapped up in draws. I mean, we're going to be talking about that all day, I think, at Newmarket as well. Um, the outsider of the uh, of the field. A quick mention for uh, Thunder of Niagara, Ross. I'll, I'll aim this one towards towards you. Mark Johnson teaming up with uh, Joe Fanning is. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Oswell Princess has just reared up and in this day and age that might well remove any chances of Haswell Princess going forward so Ross I'll, I'll quickly throw Thunder of Niagara to you yeah uh, again a yard who've got their um, their juveniles in uh, in very good form um, the uh, pedigree is, is is mixed in terms of this this surface night of thunder's only had one runner at newcastle finished third over this uh, this course and distance which is you know a bit of a point of way too small a sample size to make anything um interesting from but the fact that the horses the yards juveniles are so forward uh has to make this one of interest uh it's been nominated as well again which i'm still a bit on the fence of whether that mm. how much that makes a difference really but um yeah should be should be of interest um uh, purely based on the, the the yards juveniles at the moment and how well they run in the all weather as well we have just got one other horse being taken out now almost gone was really set off in the stalls I'm, I'm not sure by what but it's being checked over by the vet um they are two pretty big priced that run has almost gone as 80 to one and uh, harswell princess at 66 to one that'll take if they both weren't to run that would take us down to the uh to the eight but there are a few playing up uh, here uh, Kate and probably more than we've seen in recent days yeah exactly as you say a lot of the newcomers have been um, really well behaved and surprisingly so and because I know that the BHA obviously implemented well that advice when they said to trainers please don't send your newcomer here or to the races if you think that they're going to play up which there's no way of telling that in general um but they've been pretty good on the whole but yeah a few of these are just upsetting each other now and it's having a domino effect but yeah, there's the one that just reared up obviously we saw it with mighty gurkha yesterday before mm. he went on to win he reared up and actually slightly went down a bit he didn't go the whole way over i think if they go the whole way over if they rear up then they have to be automatically a non-runner willing to be corrected on that but I think if they just go up and slightly stumble, they're okay to run as long as obviously they pass the uh, the vet check. But yeah, a few of these right now are just really starting to upset each other. Yeah, that was my thinking as well. If they go over, then then it's curtains for for their chance yeah. of being able to run. As now Harswell Princess, who had oh. <laughs> Yeah, Haswell that's Princess. not going to happen, is it? Yeah, Harswell Princess. I, I don't think is going to be taking part in this. Oh, yeah. Right. Mm. Uh, mm. <laughs> almost gone has <laughs> done similar Harswell Princess has now tried to outdo uh, almost gone so we might be without a couple in this race we'll bring you any uh, news when it does officially come through because we haven't actually received any official wording on, on who's going to run and who's not in, in this at the moment but Third Kingdom uh, is 6-4 to four ahead of the market Captain Magnum is uh, just going forward now for Archie Watson and Holly Doyle 7-4 to four. Rebel at Dawn 6-1 15-2 Thunder of Niagara who is forward uh, in the uh, stalls we are 
are almost set over at uh, Newcastle. I think we've got one more waiting to go forward, and it looks like Jig's Princess, who yeah, has it, also been having a think about it. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, this is a, a race of, you know, uh, the haves and the haves nots, as it were. Um, but yeah, interesting to see how the, this market is now in play. The actual the horses who know what they're doing. Uh, fair. fair. Newcastle. Of those entering the uh, starting stalls, almost gone, did, but it was a little bit unruly. This is the Betway British Stallion Studs at EBF at Maiden Stakes. Freak Out will show the way in the early stages by a neck. It looks a steady pace. From Jigs Princess uh, in the yellow colours, and then over to the far side is uh, Thunder of Niagara, who's being tracked uh, by Ventura Mutiny, and uh, Third Kingdom, who's all smothered up in the early part of the race. That one keeps company with Captain Magnum, with more towards the near side, the light blue colours of Rebel at Dawn, and the check jacket of Mont Blanc at the back end of the field. Racing on down towards the halfway stage, already just being nudged along back in behind runners here, Ventura Mutiny, but up ahead it is Jigs Princess by a neck over Thunder of Niagara, the far side. Freak Out is now coming under a ride. Rebel at Dawn is quickening up nicely over towards this side. In behind runners, both Captain Magnum and Third Kingdom need more as they make the journey on with a furlong and a half to go. Thunder of Niagara and Joe Fanning have kicked on here by a couple of... She was beaten by Lord Ridderford on the last start, but it was a massive front runner's bias that day. Uh, Jason Hart grabbed the ball by the horns on Lord Ridford and Hayley Turner, she wasn't seen at her best. Restless Rose was way, way too keen and took uh, second uh, from last and was one of the only horses on the entire car to make any ground up whatsoever. So um, I thought uh, Restless Rose was a little bit a little bit overpriced on the uh, uh, the market there and it does have a good run at the track and its name at the back end of last year. So... Yeah, I'll take Mackinac and Restless Rose uh, low draw. Restless Rose 20 to 1, Mackinac 11 to 2. Uh, Kate, how do you see this going? Yeah, I'm in agreement with Ross over Stone of Destiny that he's a bit of a funny horse and is hard to catch right. So at the prices, he would be one I would be willing to oppose, despite Andrew Boulding obviously hitting the ground running with the start of this season. Um, so I thought, one, that, that was the bit of value there. Uh, it's just slightly ebbing out in the betting there is Count Dorsey. Uh, James Doyle riding for Tim Eastley for the first time. Uh, he's really come into his own since going handicapping over five furlongs towards the back end of last season with only one disappointing run coming in an, appren in an apprentice handicap at York where he finished 15th. But he put that, you, you can easily put that uh, result aside as an anomaly. Uh, and it looks like it was, which I can forgive as it was in an apprentice handicap, but as I said, and ridden by a jockey who has never ridden him before and hasn't sat on him since. And he was then second on his next start, beating ahead in a handicap off of 80 over five furlongs before getting an easy win on his next start off of 83 and has posted another second and won his most recent start off of 91, which came in October at Catrick on soft ground over five furlongs. So, uh, maybe prefer a bit of more juice in the ground, but uh, I'm going to side with him. Well, Plom now heading the market at four to one, nine to two Stone of Destiny, five to one Mackinac, thirteen to two Leonis Dream. As we are this just about to now in play. Favorite new market for one fifteen. over five furlongs coming out of the starting stalls there. Royal Birth just nodded a little bit and Stone of Destiny got a knock from him and is at the back of the field. Leotis Dream on the right with the yellow sleeves. Pacey up there with Count Dorsey in the grey and red jacket on the left in the light blue. Copper Dream is up with them. Then Restless Rose. She's about fourth position at the moment. Blue de Vega, a green cap is next. The same jacket on Cordor is against the running rail. Mackinac behind those. Extreme left now. Stone of deaths and he's passed plenty of these already as they move past halfway. A plum venturous the next pair. Royal Birth and Street Parade at the back of the field into the dip, approaching the last fell on the light blue copper knight in front, leading to Count Dorsey in second place. Mackinac Stone of Destiny behind those, then the Otis Dream. Mackinac trying to chase down Copper Knight, who has the lead as they race towards the line. Copper Knight Mackinard comes to join him. Very tight Stone of Destiny and Count Dorsey or say it is a close run thing for them third of these colours over the, uh, the past few years Deacon Blue is obviously the one that uh, springs to mind but yeah I, I can understand how you would um, get frustrated with Mer Merchant of Venice I do think the horse being campaigned in smallish fields over a mile has been very much against him so I do think that the, the, the drop back to seven here with the likelihood of a better pace is, is a bonus for him so if you've given up it might well be today that <laughs> it's time to get on <laughs> 
Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Especially when I've gone um, for four tomorrow as well. <laughs> this is all the makings of yes. absolute heartbreak. It's all the makings of um, you uh, being uh, having a right kick in the uh, so and sos for uh, for <laughs> for deserting an old friend. But the interesting <laughs> one for me is Tad Leal. Uh, really interesting stable switcher. Ed Dunlop to Richard Fahey. Um, you know, I don't think you'd struggle to find too many people who are huge fans of Ed Dunlop um, with his horses. So anything that runs well and, and then switches to a, a better yard is of interesting. Um, I thought he ran a cracker behind Assimilation in a good race on his last start for previous connections. Um, he was held up at the back uh, and he didn't quite get into a challenging position, but he ran on quite, catch- uh, quite eye-catchingly. And I thought he was worth a chance um, switching to uh, to the Fahey team. So that two box doesn't seem to be much of a, um, a negative based on that last race. So, um, yeah, small chance with, with Tadley, but the... There are quite a few um, unknowns in this race, so it's a, it's a tough one to kick off at Newcastle. Yeah, just a reminder, recent times you just uh, try to avoid uh, the uh, the far side draws, but Fortimore in store three and Tadliel in store two. Far side draws but haven't done too badly since racing has returned. Fortimore is 11 to 4, 7 to 2 about Merchant of Venice. Tadliel uh, is at 5 to 1 over at uh, Newcastle, as we are just waiting for. Uh, the last couple to uh, go forward uh, over in Newcastle. I think it will be Tadliel to uh, complete the line. So absolutely last chance to uh, get your bets on here at William Hill if you wish to get involved uh, with this at 1.30, the second race of the day at uh, Newcastle, as we are just about... In this market line. is now in play. We're okay. Uh, over at Newcastle, let's go and take the call. First time up when they are... We're ready at Newcastle, uh, Merchant of Venice for Andrew, and away. And early pace uh, being shown near side by Suitcase and Taxi. Fort Amour is also well to the fore. And Wild Hope in the beige coloured jacket is another lying up handily. One from the right is at Tadley. On the very far right is Twin Appeal. As they gallop their way through the opening couple of furlongs. Not too far off the speed either is the white-faced John Kirk. Up a Suitcase and Taxi takes a clear lead now. Making the run down this uh, long home straight here at Newcastle. And a little bit isolated at the moment under these stands rails. So Suitcase and Taxi. Taxi ahead over Wild Hope. John Kirk is going a little bit freely, antagonising white and blue colours. Fort Moore in a yellow colour jacket uh, at the moment is three from the right. So they're being followed through by Tadliel and Twin Appeal. Back when in behind those is Queen's Sergeant, then Merchant of Venice, the red sleeves. Global Warning is well back in the field, as is Mogsy in the pink as they work their way on down towards the final couple of furlongs. Suitcase and Taxi now beginning to slide back and Fort Amour comes through to take over with on the far side Tadliel. They now Emerges the leading pair with back in behind them Queen Sergeant, then Antagonize and Wild Hope. It's Tad Leal over to the far side under Tony Hamilton, just about nosing to the front now from Fort Amour. Queen Sergeant is endeavouring to get on terms, is only three parts of a length back. A good battle to the line here between Tad Leal and Fort Amour. Tad Leal just about in front, edging across towards the near side, taking Fort 